What's happening peeps and peepants? I hope you guys are having an awesome day. In this video we are going to take a closer look at the Mirror Escort Carrier. Now that is a tiny ship and definitely Escort class. Now I have to say something that um, is really interesting uh, the way that the uh, Cryptic is doing this. This is going to be a ship that you can use or at least you need to win through the Infinity Box and you can actually use it uh, throughout your entire um, characters. And by that I mean you just need to have a character that is gone throughout the, the tutorial. So I think that's level 10 or 11 that you come across in uh, in the Federation or Space Dock. And you can basically use your ship or this, this ship on uh, your newly created character or any other characters that you want. Um, now the all of the information and statistics are going to be displayed uh, in this video, um, all of the customization, the comparison with the Lucari Scout ship, the Triangle or Dorito ship, did you guys call it? And then we are going to take this thing into battle. Now, for those that are following my channel for a long time, I usually do visuals as well. I put them in, in the reviews. Um, due to the fact that uh, Star Trek Online now has 36 visuals, or at least 36 individual different visuals, I'm going to uh, separate the visual review on a another video and I'm going to do just the review on this particular ship. So let's go to the statistics. So right here we are on the exchange. You guys are seeing this, the cheapest one at uh, Saturday the 15th of December. Uh, the cheapest one right here is listed for 409 million EC and the next one is 410, 415. Now, um, when this thing started dropping on Tuesday and Wednesday, um, the prices were about 350, 360, something in that ballpark. But now it's gone up, or at least the demand uh, has gone down, so the prices are going up. Um, I'm going to talk about the statistics right here. Now, this is a little bit of a backstory that uh, Kriplik likes to put in the ships, and it's kind of fun to read as well. Um, and they do this because it's, you know, it's kind of fun. You guys can actually know the ship a little bit better. So, you know, uh, why this ship is actually um, a escort carrier for the uh, mirror uh, <laughs> universe. So anyway, um, let's read this thing. Incidents with the altered dimension known as the mirror universe have resulted in some Terran vessel being studied and retrofitted for service. These... Angle uh, class mirror escort carrier tier 6 is retrofitted from a ship that crossed from the 23rd century into the present day space. A fearsome Terran vessel, uh, this starship is capable of integrating technologies emphasizing with Terran philosophy to not to crush the enemy but make it hurt the entire way. <laughs> this is kind of fun. In a episode of the Discovery where uh, Captain Yorka was being punished, he was like being severely being punished, or at least that is what they portrayed right there. Um, so they're <laughs> they're funny. It's funny that they put the that kind of like uh, emphasis on a ship as well. So we don't want to kill you really fast. But we want to postpone the death of, you know, of the enemy as long as we can. And we are going to make them hurt the entire way as it is written right there. Uh, its design drives this point home, maximizing its offensive capabilities by augmenting the powerful weapon layout by debilitating scientific support allies or allies um, attributes. And a full hangar bay of fighters ready to unleash destruction on anyone and anything their captain points them at. Now, this is really interesting. I do love it that this thing has a hangar bay. So, we can actually compare it. I believe there is only one other escort carrier in the in the ship, in the in STO. And that's the Gemadar one. Correct me if I'm wrong. In the comment section is all yours. But uh, this is going to be like, or at least from my perspective, this is going to be like a counter, uh, a counter for the Gemadar Escort Carrier that also has one hangar bay and it's basically the same kind of ship, even though it's not the same. I mean, the Escort Carrier from the Gemadar is a tier 5 ship. You can also upgrade that to a tier uh, 5U, so the upgraded version. But 
This one is a tier 6, so there are similarities, but totally different, different ship. Keep that in mind. Um, this starship can be used from any level upon completing the tutorial experience. Okay, that is what I just said in the beginning of the video. As you level up, this ship gray, uh, gains additional whole uh, weapon slots and console slots. So you can use all of your abilities right away. That's really cool. Um, when you're going to level this thing up, you're going to get additional whole weapon slots or more weapons as you level this thing uh, with your character, or at least your character based on your... Um, um, this ship is going to be based upon the character that you're leveling up. So let's say you have, um, you're going to level, I think it's every 10 levels that you're going to get a upgraded to the ship and also console slot. So very, very nice, very nice. Um, I'm actually interested to see if this thing is going to catch on or not. Um, honestly, my opinion that is that this thing is not going to catch on because it is a lockbox ship. Even though it's 400 million right now, who is going to pay 400 million for a newly created character and then use a lockbox ship on that character to level it up? Me personally, no way. <laughs> I'm not going to spend 400 million as, as it is currently just for a newly created character i just give i just use the uh the ships that uh, you know that star trek online gives me to level up characters not really buying a single ship just for a for a character but that's just my perspective anyway uh continuing the mirror escort carry comes equipped with the cascading subatomic disruption universal console activating this console uh intensify intensely damages a local subatomic fields for a short duration this energy the energy release from this console seeks out and significantly harms nearby power sources um usually starships <laughs> dealing significant electrical damage as it cascades outwards as the, uh, the subatomic disruptions leap from target to target they leave behind areas temporarily weakened at the micron scale, making this ship temporarily more vulnerable to incoming attacks. So, I don't know if you guys uh, are um, uh, like newly created or at least new, uh, new players that are come to Star Trek, or are you like you know a older from maybe five six years back and you're still enjoying the game? But there is something similar to this in the game already. It's called the isometric charge. Uh, the Klingons usually uh, <laughs> use this, this this as an ability, the, the Vorcha class. Uh, they basically shoot shoot out one particular uh, like torpedo kind of stuff, and that um, chains off of other enemies as well. And it, you know, does a lot and lot and lot more damage, and it's like crazy to, uh, to counter. You basically can't counter that, so... Whenever that thing comes, you basically, oh crap, you're going to die. <laughs> but anyway, this console provides a passive boost to exotic damage and auxiliary power can be equipped at any console slot on any starship and you only can equip one of these consoles at any given time. After achieving level 5 in your mirror escort carrier, you will unlock the superior aerial denial uh, starship trait. While this trait is slo slotted, activating beam fired willows, cannon scatter volley, Causes your weapon to debuff the foe's armor resistance for a short duration, as well as activating beam fire at will one and can escalate volley one on your hangar pets. Wow, so this trade is definitely for people that uh, either love having hangar pets and also love having the a debuff to foe's armor resistance. So this is also a debuff. Very nice. So this is for the Federation and Federation aligned faction rank required must complete the tutorial so you can you know whenever you're completing the tutorial when you uh, are able to pilot your own starship this thing is going to be available for you if you want to go that route. Uh, hull modified of uh, 1.15 it is an escort so not a lot of hull right there. Uh, shield modifier 1.2. I definitely enjoy this number. Uh, it has five weapons on the front that scales with the level, and they actually mean this like if you're using it in a low level character, you're going to have less weapon slots. And aft weapons 2. 
uh, two device slots, uh, the console modification, five tactical, two engineering, and four science. They're also going to scale with the levels. So if you're having a low level character, you might not get the entire loadout as it is written right here. A base turn rate of 14 degrees per second. Now, do keep in mind this is a carrier and this is also an escort. So both, uh, you know, the best out of the two worlds, even though this has like an escort type turning rate, 14 degrees per second right here. Impulse modifier 0 0.18 with an inertia rating of 60. Uh, plus 10 to weapon power to, um, um, no, plus 10 power to the weapons and also plus 10 to the auxiliary power settings. Uh, this thing can load dual cannons and I highly recommend you guys using dual cannons if you want to fly this thing, not beams, because, you know, this thing is going to turn too quickly. Dual or dual heavy cannons, go with that. Um, console, that universal, the cascading subatomic disruption. Uh, experimental weapon slot equipped with the Graviton implosion projector. What? That's interesting. Implosion projector. Okay, we'll have to see that. A little bit in uh, in in the game as well. What it does, hopefully, it's going to have some cool visuals. One hangar bay loaded with the mirror universe a shuttlecraft. Hmm. Okay, that might be interesting um, to see because I have I don't think I've ever seen shuttlecrafts. Maybe they're like you know replicating the shuttlecraft from you know the Starfleet Academy that fly near you if you make like a, a Discovery character. Maybe that's hmm. Who knows? We'll definitely will see that in uh, in space later on. Uh, this thing also gives the ability package for the escort carrier, so precise weapon system, tactical maneuver, quick deployment for your hangar pets, devastation weaponry is going to enhance critical uh, critical chance, sorry, and superior that is that unlockable starship trait, superior area, area denial that is that unlockable starship trait. Like I mentioned, now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to head over into space and see if this thing can be um, no. Oh, hold on I'm going to go to the customization of this thing after that we are going to uh, go into space and see how this thing is uh, going to compare in its size against the Lucaris scout ship but first customization alrighty so we are at the customization of this ship and it looks badass right it looks badass to begin with Very nice. We do have two different templates, though. So I believe this is like the Federation timeline era type deal. And this one is the Terran universe themed. I do enjoy these red trims. Those are really, really making this ship look beautiful. Or at least to me it is. Um... There is a walker interior, hmm. so I might actually show that as well. Some of you already know what I'm talking about, and it's really cool. Um, whoa, look at how many uh, material types we have right here. That is insane. Wow, insane amount right here. All right, so we got Discovery Area Starship. Uh, Type 1 right here. Starfleet Type 1. Whoa, that is that is not... Somebody did a lot of work making these things available for you guys. That's nice. Even though it's not really... Did I see some... Oh, okay, look at this. This is like basically right here where my mouse is pointing. This is an escape hatch, right? Like submarines have... That you need to rotate this thing, like, you know, to, to go from one compartment to the other compartment. <laughs> wow. It's nice that they incorporated that in there. All right. So we got uh, Discovery Area, Starfleet, Type 2, right on your screen right now. And I'm not really particularly fond of this. Type 2. Too much glow... Not really, not really on the good side. This is, it's missing something. Not really nice. Number three, oh, number three is really good. I like that. Now look at this thing. This thing is, has like, looks like moss. 
<laughs> right here. The greenish tint kind of looks like this thing has like features of the assimilated space set being displayed on it, but then only that part, you know, nothing more. Nice. All right. Uh, type 4, continuing down the line of the Discovery era. Uh, Starship-themed materials for the Starfleet. From the Starfleet variant of these... Okay. Continuing to five. Whoa, what the hell is this? Oh, come on, this is not good. This is just like one color. What is what is up with this? We need a different different tints. This is not really good. Or this I don't think it is good. This is this coloring is really bad. Alright, so we got Terran type. <laughs> What the heck is this? Oh man, okay, okay, okay. So this is basically the old version of Terran ships that we have in the game as templates. We can actually uh, colorize them like this. <laughs> it's kind of funny that they put it in here as well to use it as a material template for us. That's nice. And we're, we will be able to change, yeah, the colors. To make it really, really ugly. <laughs> Let's go green. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> so we got green, yellow, and red. Nice. The NX, can we uh, undo? There we go. That's a good one. NX version of these uh, particular material types that we can put on, on the ship as overlays. Very nice. Kind of liking it. The less you see, the better it is in kind of like, you know, details and stuff like that. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. I do enjoy this. Even though it's a little bit too shiny, it's like, you know, just coming out of the assembly line. Shiny probably has the same, like, you know, the, um, the new car smell <laughs> if you can call it that all right type one. Oh, oh, i love this unfortunately can i zoom in no this is yeah this is the 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 uh the highest zoom factor that we have in the game i kind of wish to, to see these things kind of look like carbon fiber but not okay I love I love I love type zero. I really enjoy that. Type one, not so much. Now I do want to point out that if you guys are seeing different material types that I'm using right here, and there might be a couple of them that you guys don't have, um, that has to do with you know my particular character basically unlocking everything that she is able to uh, to have. So that has to do with you know my particular account. Um, so this is type 2 material type, uh, type, and I'm basically talking about the last two right here, the veteran and upgrade that we are also going to display, but there might be others others uh, as well as uh, material types that I can use and you guys can't. Uh, type 3, basically the same deal. Type 4, ooh, very cool. Uh -huh, very nice. So I'm really interested to to know uh, what you guys actually use on your particular ship. Are you using like vanity ships from the tier six reputation, or are you using a particular space set with that particular um, visuals on your ship? Because there are so many to choose from these days. Type five. I do love these details right here. These trims. Does they also run along through the... Um, no. I thought they were going to run along right here at the uh, saucer, or saucer, the uh, nacelle. But they don't. Hmm. 
All right. Moving on to type six. Oh, that is really bright. Oh my God. If you want to blind somebody, don't use the beacon of Kalos. Use this <laughs> T type six. You basically blind everybody. <laughs> oh man. All right. Moving on to type seven. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, wow. That is, oh, even underneath. Look at that. Oh, that is a beautiful design. This is, yeah, this is the material type that I would definitely be using on this ship. Type 7. Oh, yeah. Type 7, it is my personal favorite. Type 8, uh, just too much brightness. Oof. I do love these carbon fiber kind of looking strips. Very cool. And it also has ears. Look at that. It has bunny ears. <laughs> All right. Um, type A to B. Oh, okay. So this there is a toned down version on the material reflection. Very nice. Very, very nice. I like it. So we got the veteran. Something some of you or some of you uh, have or may not have. I don't know if you guys wanting to put up like 300 bucks for the game. But I I did and they gave me on uh, all of the ships that I'm going to use. There is an option for me to use the material types veteran and the upgraded version. And this is the upgraded version. Hmm. No, I don't really like it. Uh, what was it? The oh yeah, this is how this ship comes out of the box with a Discovery Aaron Terran Type One, but it's also beautiful with uh, what was it eight or seven? Yeah, seven, seven and one. Hmm, can't decide. Seven looks a little bit more badass to me though than one. Ah, no, the other one. This one. Hmm. But I guess that's just personal uh, preference. Now, obviously, there are different um, pattern overlays that you can put up on your on this particular ship, uh, hull uh, sanctions, and also the cells. These, these, these. Very nice. You can change all of them to have like different styles, and also like we also did different coloring. Look at that. Very, very bad. <laughs> I do love the red though. The red is really good. Fits the theme. But anyway, let's head into space and see how this thing is going to compare against the uh, Lucari scout ship. So in space we are right now and this is how the ship compares to the Lucari scout ship. Now you guys might be thinking, where is the Lucari scout ship? It is right there behind this thing. Now this thing is even bigger than the Lucari scout ship. If we can compare the two from the front to the back. Now the warp nacelles do stick out a little bit longer, but it is and it's kind of like the same size um, as the Lucari scout ship, but just a little bit. It has a little bit more uh, to the uh, to the aft section, and in the aft, it's just, this ship is a little bit bigger. <laughs> we could call it that. Um, and we can actually zoom in really. Whoa! What is that? Are those like guns? What is? No, those aren't guns, right? Those aren't turrets or something like that. Those are... If that is a turret placement, that was going to be insane. Um, yeah, this is how it compares. Uh, now, hopefully, my uh, recording software is not going to crash on me and not record, but... Because uh, I kind of did this entire thing already, but uh, we are going to get uh, we're going to get a closer look on what this uh, ship is so capable of. Now, obviously, at standard, this thing comes with the default um, weapons and uh, items like deflector, impulse, warp, and shield uh, consoles. So those are just the normal Mark Ten, and I believe these are like. Uh, without any uh, level to them, so they are level less, these items. Uh, but if you upgrade them, they can basically go up there, even though I don't know why you should upgrade them. Just, you know, grab some better ones 
and then put them up here and grab a reputation set to put it on up here. But anyway, uh, five weapons on the front. We have a deflector slot, impulse, warp and shield, basically the standard stuff. The aft weapon, we have room for two. And this is that experimental weapon slot. Um, uh, this thing comes equipped with the Gravidon Implosion Charges. This is going to be an area of effect, pull, debuff, and heavy kinetic damage. A 360 degree targeting arc with 570, uh, no, 5722.1 kinetic damage. Pulls enemy near target together, minus 25 old damage resistance rating as well. So also a debuff uh, for the next 5 seconds, uh, decreases with distance from target. And also it's going to cost you 10 weapon power when you're going to fire this thing with a 4 second cooldown. I'm definitely enjoying this thing. Hopefully it's going to have really cool visuals. Now this does an area of effect pull, a debuff and also kinetic based damage. So unfortunately a drown or at least a, you know, a not so positive note. Uh, dealing kinetic damage you basically needs... To maximize kinetic base damage, you need to strip away the shields of the target to actually um, make this a viable weapon. You can use it on a crystalline uh, entity, though. That doesn't have any shield. That is just, you know, a... Uh, a uh, that is just a tank. All right, um, continuing down the line, three devices, two engineering consoles for survivability. So... Right here, we can actually see that, you know, we don't uh, have a lot of survivability with this thing. Uh, but we do have enough science console slots to make a difference when you're going to using, uh, when, you are, when you are going to use uh, scientific based, um, you know, damage dealing abilities to actually increase that. And also the traditional route having, you know, lots of DPSs by using or by utilizing consoles from the tactical console slots. We have five of them right here. So um, this is gonna be the uh, universal console, the cascading subatomic disruption. It is also going to enhance exotic particle generation and also auxiliary power setting. And the clicky, the clicky is going to be spreading electrical damage and resistance debuff at 135 degrees targeting arc to the primary target, 15,583.4 electrical damage and also debuffing the same target, minus 40 old damage resistance rating for the next 10 seconds. Very nice. I like that. Up to two secondary targets. Two secondary targets. Okay, so this chains off not uh, when it fires on the first target, it's going to um, debuff the target and also going to deal electrical damage. And then it's going to chain off left and right to two other targets. And the second is going to get less electrical damage. So 11,687.5. And also minus 20 old damage resistance rating for the next 10 seconds. And up to four terriary targets. Terriary? Terriary? What is terriary? So. Okay, so up to four tertiary. Tertiary? No, terriary. What is. Okay, whatever. Um, terriary targets. Don't know what that is, but up to four of these targets. So, very nice. So it chains off the first one and then left and right. And then if you look at the left one, it's also going to chain up to two other ones, if I'm reading this correctly, and also to the right, to two other ones. So one, two, and then four targets. Wow. Both of the, or at least all of them are going to get electrical base damage and also a old damage resistance debuff on them. And also activating an exotic and damage ability grants 4% cy cycling. Is that is that from this console? Or is that from a buff of mine? No, that's a buff of mine. All right. Uh, next one is going to be the hanger pets. Um, so this thing is basically a hanger pet. Um, Shuttlecraft equipped with phaser beam array. I can use beam overload one. Now this is the standard what this ship comes with. Um, 
So I would definitely recommend you guys grabbing yourself the pet from the fleet store. It's going to cost you a little bit of dilithium, but it's very useful to have because they are going to have a higher um, uh, ability uh, level. It's, I believe it's going to be level three beam overload. So, you know, these are, you know, just grab them from the fleet store. There is also one from the dilithium store, but I would not recommend those because those are just one level up. The best one, if you're going to go for the best one, go for the fleet store. And um, yeah, those are going to be the best one out there. Um, for anything else, statistics. Oof. All the numbers that you guys see on right here are going to be based upon my particular character. So my character doesn't have anything in you know in its skill tree so it's definitely a, a basically a newly created character you guys are seeing that i don't have any consoles just the normal that where this ship comes equipped with and right now i'm having 17.4 flight turn rate with just the standard uh engines and you know all of the items that this ship comes with so very nice to be honest. Seventeen is going to turn seventeen degrees any uh, for a second. So that's that's nice. Um, so we got a Lieutenant Commander Universal and also a Temporal Op Station. So you can do lots of you know uh, scientific based damage. We have a normal uh, beam fired will. Because I am using beams, even though I do recommend you guys using uh, cannons. I'm using beams. I really didn't want to buy cannons to put on this thing just to do the review. Um, there is also a Lieutenant Engineering slash Intelligence Station, so you can go full crazy with uh, scientific based damage and abilities like that. Uh, Commander Tactical Station, just to do DPS with lots of debuffs, and also scientific based damage with, you know, Gravity Well. You kind of have, you kind of need to have Gravity Well these days, right? Gravity Wells. Is, is what it is and um, I do want to say that don't use this as a build please don't use this as a build no real thought has gone into this so keep in mind this is not a typical build this is just to showcase what this thing is capable of and how it's going to um, perform in in combat later on um, so uh, what shall I do? Shall I also give you guys a bridge tour, even though you guys have watched it a bazillion time on the uh, on the TV shows? But let me just do that. Let me go and give you guys a bridge tour. So this is definitely the Discovery um, a bridge layout. You guys can actually see it if you go up here. There is like this big chair and the bridge. Now these are I don't think that yeah these are just you know decorating doors they don't actually go anywhere we do have contact duty and talk to counselor what therapy session this is just what Okay, I need some counseling then. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so duty officers to do like duty officer assignments um, for the majority of them. Operation also doing uh, duty officer stuff. Very nice. And you can actually walk on the glass. No, you. C oh, they put a wall up here. You could. I believe you could go to the uh, to the upper part right here. Hmm. Maybe they changed it. And these are a couple of just random bridge officers. Very nice. And this is where most of the people sit when they're in charge. And we see many people sit on that chair. Uh, what is this right here? Library files, if you want to go uh, study. What is this? Account bank access. And the last one that we are going to look small shuttle craft. And that's about it. The bridge tour is very cool. This is a really cool design as it is. Uh, but because it's been showcased in the TV shows a lot, I'm not going to spend too much time up here. 
because um, I need to go to Argala to do a patrol mission with you guys. So let's do that right, right now. So it's been a while that I have not showcased any ship on the Argala, but right now we are uh, going to utilize this thing and also going to utilize the Federation shuttlecraft. And I actually want to see how they actually... Uh, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Where are you going? Where are you going? There we go. So we can actually see that thing, hopefully. Okay, so it is definitely just like the TV show, a replica, oh, a replica of those shuttlecrafts that they were using. Go away! Uh, that they were using on uh, the TV show. They definitely made a replica on those and just put them up here for us to grab. Very nice. I like it. I enjoy it. Um, now. The abilities that I'm using, like I said, don't give me grief. <laughs> it's just something to showcase this uh, particular ship. I'm doing a couple of like exotic abilities just to, you know, give a hard time on my graphics card. And this is what I'm, or at least how this thing is performing. Now, these swarmers, that is a trait that I have each time I take damage. Ooh, I took a lot of damage right there. Um, they are going to help me out a little bit. I should get like a pop-up. There we go. And they should come that way. Mm, do I have anything to for survivability? No, I did not even put stuff for survivability. What is up with that? Well, I have continuity, so... I should be okay. But anyway, this is what I how the ship is actually performing. And you know, it's like I said, this is a escort ship. Keep in mind that survivability might be an issue, but um if you go with um cannons or dual heavy cannons, meaning a really small uh targeting arc, that might be really interesting for you guys to uh, to explore because you basically are vaporizing one or more enemies really quickly. And as you guys can see, I'm utilizing a lot and lots of uh, small pets. So this is really interesting as a ship to uh, to have and utilize. Now, I might actually die here where the war corn breach right here. Uh, no. Okay, good. And I really need to be careful about warp core breaches because... My ship is not built for, um, oh, continue and it's kicked in because I'm, I probably just died if that wasn't the case. But even though I'm using basic stuff, you know, nothing has really been upgraded or anything like that. Very nice. Kicking butt on the enemies. It's a little bit overpowered, even though it's like default. <laughs> okay, so what I was really interested to see was this thing. Area of effect, pull, debuff, and heavy kinetic base damage. So let's see on this guy what it does. Three. Oh, he just... Seriously? He just jammed my uh, sensors. I cannot see him, but my pets, they are able to, and they're doing a lot of DPS on this guy. There we go. Give me some of that healing. And he's gone. So, let's get to the next one. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is that... Um uh, what was it called? The universal console slot? No, not the universal, the uh, experimental weapon uh, slot. Here we go. In three, two, one, and then boom! Look at that. It's like firing. Off. Um, it's like firing a. Uh, what's it called? The firecracker? <laughs> nice. Like fireworks at him. There it goes. Pew. And you can actually see that it also debuffs him a little bit visually. Come on, fire him. There we go. There is a little bit of a uh, animation right there. Nice. These guys. Pew. Oh, that one missed. Oh my god, that one missed.
Nice. Now I don't have any sh weapon power. Okay, uh, next one that I'm going to showcase is this uh, universal console slot, the cascading subatomic disruption. But I kind of need a bunch of enemies together. Because I actually want this thing to chain off to other um, other enemies as well. And should be, if I kill this guy, there should be a really big group coming up. There we go. This is going to be the last part of the um this video because no 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 don't oh my pets are firing at him okay here we go with the um universal console ability in in three two one and then boom and there there goes to the secondary and this guy got hit twice wow okay basically two minute uh cooldown and continuity just kicked in again. <laughs> Very nice. So it did chain off of one and then to the other ones as well. Um, that is very interesting because basically the same deal with the isometric charge uh, does the same deal. Only the isometric charge actually chains off on one target. But this one splits into two and then splits to other two. So you see a left to right and then also a left right on the left one and the le left right on the... It's very confusing, but it ex basically chains off to um, uh, seven other targets. So primary and then two secondary and then each of these secondary left and right. So very interesting, very interesting to say, uh, to say the least about this as an ability and in a console. Um, let me also give you guys a, a mastery because I that I did not do so level one accuracy plus five level two plus five in defense level three uh, 37.3 recharge time reduction to launching carrier pets basically because this is a carrier after all and these guys are going to start attacking me so let me just move out of here move away from these guys Sorry, guys, that I'm doing this on your guys' time, but I kind of need to go away. Uh, level 4 is going to increase the critical chance by 2.5%. And um, the last one is going to be... Uh, level 5 is that unlockable starship trait, the superior aerial denial. Um, so when you're going to activate... Um, uh, fire at will or scatter volley... Uh, it's also going to grant uh, fire at will and scatter volley to uh, your hangar pets and also upgrading the energy based attack for the next 20 seconds to the target does not stack minus 30 old damage resistance rating for the next five seconds so i kind of like it uh, basically two ways of doing this thing it's uh, or at least for this um as as trait uh, tra as trades go you can actually use it just for your hangar pets to give them uh you know more f options to fire at the enemy and also you can use it to debuff minus 30 uh old uh, damage resistance rating for the next five seconds very nice right i like it i like it um i don't know if i'm going to buy it off the exchange and then use it straight away from um you know, for a newly created character or just, you know, going to get it from the exchange and just give it to Secuta, but hmm, I don't know. Uh, kind of, I kind of I want to, uh, to be honest. And 400 billion is not a lot these days, but it's still a big chunk of money, <laughs> to be honest. But anyway, so think really good of what you're going to use it for. But that's it for this video. I'm just going to say, hopefully you guys had a little bit of fun, knowledge and entertainment coming out of my channel. And I would love to see you guys on the next video. For now, I'm going to say take care and later.